And then we had this quartet term, which we'll call S4, and that multiplied together all four of these nodes in a new synergistic interaction. And so what happened here is that I took something that was a series of pairwise interactions, I modified by tracing out sigma A, I induced new couplings between these non-locally connected nodes, and those couplings got some particular value, 1 eighth log coach 4 beta. And then in addition to connecting nodes in this long range fashion, I also induced this synergistic effect between the quartet as a whole. So that's what happens when I do this tracing just to a single node in the full network. But now let's imagine that I did this to all of the nodes. And in particular, I took along any particular line, every other node, I called that node one of the sigma a's that I'm going to trace out, and then I staggered it in the following way. So up here is going to be another sigma a, over here is going to be another sigma a, over here is going to be another sigma a, up here, this is a good sigma that I'm going to keep, here's a sigma a, or sorry, here's a sigma I'm going to keep, up here is a sigma a, okay? Down here is a sigma a that I'll trace, here is a sigma I'll keep. Here's a sigma A I'm going to trace. And so let me make those sigma A's more clear. Oop. There's a sigma A. There's a sigma A. There's one. There's one. There's one. There's one. Okay. And so you can see that what used to be this nice lattice where all these things was connected is now, there's a sigma A, over here, is now missing or has a lot of gaps. And in fact, let me do one more row here. That sigma will keep. This is a sigma A that will knock out. This sigma will keep. This sigma will keep. This is another sigma A that will knock out. And now notice that the sigmas that remain, this one is connected to this one because of that S2 coupling that we had before, because what would, what would have happened here if we traced this guy out would have induced a pair coupling here with the magnitude S2. So we have that coupling. But notice also that if I also traced over sigma A, there'd be another set of terms where this sigma multiplied this sigma A this sigma multiplied this sigma a, when I traced out this guy here, I would induce another set of couplings between these two non-local nodes. And so in fact, the total coupling between these two here, because of tracing out both of these, is equal to 2 times s2. Similarly, down here, I've induced a coupling because of tracing out this node and tracing out this node. So that's another 2 sigma 2 coupling. Okay, Up here and over here, I have additional couplings over here and over here, over here, over here, over here, over here, over here, and further out. And now all you have to do is rotate your computer 45 degrees in the right direction, and you can see that in fact, by doing this decimation, by canceling out these sigma a's, I've now created a new lattice. It looks exactly the same as the old, except now, at least geometrically, when I've drawn these, are sort of root two longer. So by doing that decimation, I've induced a new set of couplings here. Mm -hmm. But I've kept the overall geometric structure the same. It's still a lattice. Now, there's two things we haven't talked about. One is, is that in addition to this kind of nearest neighbor coupling, we do have an additional sort of wacky coupling, which is in here all the way over here. This is still a pairwise coupling. We have one here. We have one here. It's half the strength of the blue couplings. And you know where this one came from. Remember that when we traced out sigma a, we induced pairwise couplings here, but also across here. In this case, when we trace out the second sigma a, we doubled the strength of that nearest neighbor coupling, but now we have this sort of second nearest neighbor coupling here. So we have that, and then also we have this kind of bizarro sort of synergistic coupling, which we'll write like this. Okay. 
So now we have a model where we have some two S2 couplings. We have an S2 coupling and we have an S4 coupling. The two S2 coupling is equal to one quarter log cosh or beta. This S2 on those longer range ones there is one eight log cosh or beta. And that synergistic quartet is going to be one half log cosh two beta. So we've transformed originally that white set of squares whose coupling strength between them was beta into something where you had a blue lattice there and that coupling was one quarter, one quarter log cosh two beta. And so it sort of looks like if you were able to neglect these two couplings here, if you said, ah, you know, forget about that green guy, it's only half as strong as the blue one anyway, and you know, God knows what to do with that, with that quartet, let's just drop that, then what would happen is that actually you would be sort of enforcing an approximate renormalization group transformation. You'd say, okay, hey, no, look, I know what happens. When you decimate the icing model lattice, okay, you get exactly the same thing out the other side, right? That matrix there, that JIJ is still a lattice matrix. Okay, look, the numbers are really different, but it's still making these squares. JIJ is isomorphic to the original lattice, okay? But now what you've done is you've taken beta and turned it into one quarter log cosh two beta, or sorry, log cosh four beta. Now, it's pretty easy to show that in fact, if you do this, no matter what the value of beta is, unless the value of beta is precisely zero, then in fact, the decimation transformation reduces that quantity beta. So each time you do that decimation and make this approximation, what you've done is you've reduced the coupling. So another way to say that is if you take the white lattice and you zoom out, you get a new icing model, but now the new spins are less coupled to each other. They're more weakly coupled to each other. The further and further you zoom out, the less likely you are to see big patches where all of the couplings, or sorry, all of the nodes align either in the plus one or the minus one state. Now, this is a step you haven't seen us take before, right? In the previous cases, what we did was we defined a coarse graining transformation and then we found a model that exactly reproduced the data given that coarse graining transformation. Here, we said, oh my god, I can't handle this, right? I can't handle this quartet interaction. I don't know what to do with this. I, I don't know how to sort of kind of get rid of that. I don't know what to do, right? So let's just pretend this is the only one that exists, right? When I do that trace, a model where I just have the same lattice structure and I reduce beta will only approximately reduce the data, will only approximately reproduce the data. Again, that's very different from, let's say, in the Markov chain case, when we coarse grained in time, the new model worked perfectly. There was no better model that we could find. And similarly, once we defined a projection operator and an evolution operator for the CAs, that worked perfectly. The diagram commuted. Here, the diagram, you might say, no longer commutes. Now, it turns out that this approximation here is bad. In fact, what it does is that it misses important features of how this lattice here coarse grains. But in fact, there's an approximation that's not too different that still allows you to stay within this model class. And I'll tell you what it is now. The first thing is you say, look, man, I don't know about these like weird quartet interactions. I've never seen them before. I don't like them, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut those out, okay, kill those. And then I'm gonna say, you know, look, there is this, interaction here, right? But then there's also this one here. And so even though I don't want to, I don't want to consider this sort of next nearest neighbor interaction, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that my new renormalized version of the icing model just adds together those two contributions. So instead of taking beta to one fourth log cosh for beta, instead of that, what we'll do is take beta going to three uh, eighths log cosh four beta. And again, now we're in the world of heuristics, 
right? We don't quite know how to handle this. We certainly don't know what to do with that term there. What we'd like is that when we begin with that model in that form there with pairwise interactions, when we do the decimation, we'd like to get another model that has only pairwise interactions. And what we say is, okay, there is this long range one here. We don't quite know what to do with it. On the new lattice, it looks like something that is extending further than you would expect. What we're going to do is essentially take this here and add it to those interactions there. And when we do that, we can see that beta, or rather by fiat, we say beta is going to go from beta to 3 eighths log cosh 4 beta upon doing that original decimation transformation. <laughs>